Ron, a lot has been said in the last two months about Hamas. We don't hear too much about Hezbollah. And they're sitting up there on that Syrian border right now, and they have more weapons probably than Egypt, Jordan, and everybody else is concerned. What is the likelihood that they are going to start moving? Have you had any insight into that situation? Well, I think our, uh, most of our intelligence estimates during the war were that they were not going to attack Israel during the war, primarily because of local concerns where they're in the, heading up to elections in Lebanon, and they wanted to maintain their power base uh, in Lebanon. But this is a terror organization with 50,000 rockets. That's more than most sovereign states have. Uh, but again, it's important to realize they are a tentacle of the Iranian regime. The problem here in the region, the problem here in the Middle East has an address, and it's in Tehran. It's that regime, a fanatical Ayatollah regime, that is, uh, sees itself in the vanguard of militant Islam and is trying to march both through this region and also then as a stepping stone to get to New York and London and other cities around the world. And this fanaticism is feverishly pursuing nuclear weapons. It's not stopping in that pursuit of nuclear weapons. And these other organizations, whether it's Hamas, whether it's uh, Hezbollah, these are tentacles of this Iranian octopus. And you have to deal with that Iranian octopus first. If Iran is dealt with, if Iran's nuclear ambitions are thwarted, then Hezbollah becomes a much, much different problem than it, is, than it, is, uh, than it could potentially be. Imagine what Israel would be facing if Hamas enjoyed a nuclear umbrella. Imagine the problem Israel would be facing if Hezbollah enjoyed a nuclear umbrella. It would turn what is a tactical threat into a strategic threat to the whole country. And it would create a much, much bigger problem for Israel. And rather than them being deterred by taking action, we would be deterred. And it's not just us who would be deterred. It's also the United States and every other country in the region faced with an Iranian bomb and a regime that might be willing to use it. And the old concepts of deterrence relied on a people who value life. But if people do not value life, they cannot be deterred. That's why it's so important for the world to stand together, the new administration in Washington, and to do everything in its power to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. Ron, let's move back to Gaza just a second. What is the likelihood that Hamas will embrace, will bring in Fatah or bring in Abu Mazan and say, okay, we want to join your hands again. And we want to invite you to come back. What is the chance of something like that happening? Uh, it may happen, but the only, I do not think that Hamas will change its spots or change its ideology. I think they are committed to Israel's destruction. They will stay committed to Israel's destruction. And I think many people want to find different formulas to get around the fact that Hamas wants to destroy Israel. They're looking for clever diplomatic ways how to say, yes, well, they say they want to destroy Israel. We'll put them in this type of government or that type of government, come up with this agreement or that agreement. You've got to get away from this, and you have to look truth right in the eye. They want to destroy Israel. They are not partners for peace. They will never be partners for peace. They're an impediment for peace. Anyone who wants to see peace in the region should want to see Hamas toppled, weakened, and ultimately destroyed. That's the only way that you're going to advance peace. You don't advance peace by bringing the enemies to the table. It doesn't work that way. It hasn't worked anywhere else in the world. There was a thought a couple of years ago in the wake of the Lebanon war, that, uh, or even before the Lebanon war, I should say, where Hezbollah, because it's an organization that has a base of support in Lebanon, it's important to bring them into the government. And if we bring them into the government, you will moderate them. No, the only thing you did is you gave them de facto control of Lebanon. You allowed a terror organization essentially to take over Lebanon. It's very hard to confront these regimes. The price is very high to confront Hezbollah, to confront the Hamas. But the delusion that you don't have to confront them, and that you simply can sweep this problem on the, under the rug, eventually exacts a much, much higher price. We must be very firm of who we're willing to deal with and who we're not willing to deal with. If Israel, if the international community would press for engaging with Hamas, for speaking to an organization, then they will set the cause of peace back many, many, many years, if not decades. Ron, one final question. It would appear that Abu Mazan has hired agents from Madison Avenue. <clears throat> He's simply working both sides. He was very quiet during the Gaza situation. And uh, he's playing Israel, and he's playing Gaza, Hamas. What kind of game is this man playing? Well, the important thing with Abu Mazen is that he says that he's willing uh, to live in peace with Israel. 
Uh, he says that he's willing to abide by a series of agreements uh, with Israel. And I think the important thing as we move forward with the peace process and to not make the mistake that was made with Arafat was to allow him to say one thing in English and another thing in Arabic. We have, have him say that he's for peace, but act in a way that it was opposed to peace. I think a Likud-led government by Benjamin Netanyahu will actively seek to engage Abu Mazen and Salam Fayyad, help them build up Palestinian society, help moderates in that society emerge, but I think he will be very clear that they cannot steer from the path of peace. They have to make sure that their textbooks reflect the, reflect the desire for peace with Israel. They have to make sure that their television stations, their own stations that they're in control of, broadcast a message of, of peace and not a message of war and hatred. They have to make clear that they're doing everything in their power to prepare their public for peace. If they're doing everything in their power to prepare that public for peace, then they're going to be a partner. But if they don't and they try to play a two-faced game, I don't, we've been there, we've done that, it's failed. And it's very important for the international community to make sure that Abu Mazen and Fayyad, the Palestinian leadership, continues in the right direction, a direction that can improve the situation on the ground and create progress and hopefully, eventually, the possibility of peace. Ron Derma, Senior Advisor to Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm Merle Cox in Jerusalem.